Okay, now we'll be draining the hydraulic system on the case Uh There's different ways to do it. This is sometimes the easiest way, especially on these year's tra year tractors. There's also a quarter inch plug on the bottom of the travel control valve that you can drain the system from. It's a little slower, but it's a pipe plug. Um, you can re removing hoses is usually kind of the easiest way, so that's what we're going to do here. Sometimes they come off nice, other times not so much. You can remove either one depending on how your tractor is set up and what looks like it'll be the easiest. But the one coming from the tank is the best way to way to do it so you're draining the tank and not worrying about the pump itself. Sometimes they'll fight and you got to rock them back and forth and twist them. I've been on there for 40 years so they don't go, go real good. And these are hydraulic oil rated hoses, not heater hoses. You can't use heater hoses. Obviously make sure you got your drain pan underneath. Depending on the year, but you're talking usually two, two and a half gallons coming out of here, roughly. Depending if you got a PTO system and hydraulic oil filter and whatnot. Yeah, some reason somebody put an extra clamp on this. This is a customer's tractor we're doing all kinds of work on. It's one owner tractor. It's not in bad shape, but I think maintenance has been a little uh, a little neglected and not sure uh, some of the practices of some of the repairs we've, we've found that were done in the past. But nonetheless, we'll get it ready to go back to its home four hours away. And it'll be running, running as good as it can be for being a nice 40-year-old machine that'll last another 40 years. This welded on bracket obviously isn't a factory, and that's part of the problem here with this one. But So the oil looks pretty clean. So these tractors use motor oil, not hydraulic oil, very important. So you want either a 2050 racing oil or a 1540 diesel motor oil. Those are two good choices. Uh, originally they were 2040, but it's pretty hard to find. And uh, anything within that range of a 1550 or in, anywhere in between works. In the winter time, 1540 is probably a better choice. Synthetics are a great choice. Uh, a lot of guys do use a 5W40 uh, synthetic, and again, uh, they make 1550 synthetic, which is probably the perfect option. It's a little pricey. Uh, the Mobile One makes it, and uh, Briggs and Stratton actually their Vanguard engines engines have a special oil which is made by Briggs and Stratton or for Briggs and Stratton, and it says Vanguard on it, and it's a synthetic 1550. So anything in that range will work. But you want a heavy-duty engine, like a, a engine oil, like a racing oil or diesel oil that handles the heat and, and the additive packages. Hydraulic oil will damage the system and it won't function right. It's just too thin and, and it gets too hot. So once it's done kind of draining on its own, you're going to want to disconnect the spark plug wires on both sides if you've got a twin cylinder Owen and Briggs or a single cylinder Kohler or a twin cylinder Kohler. And just crank it over for a few seconds and that'll uh, push some oil through the, the system. Make sure the plug wires are disconnected. If you start it up without any oil, you're going to destroy your pump and cause lots of expensive damage. So by disconnecting the spark plug wires, the engine can't start, but it'll still pump the pump over slowly. crank the starter over too many times just let it cool off this one's actually got a dead battery so we're using jumper cables you can hear them, hear them snapping but demonstrate the purpose of what we're trying to do here when you do that if you want make sure your tractors are neutral and you can move your travel control forward in reverse to, to pump through the circuits you can lift and lower your uh, hydraulic mower deck lift or three-point hitch lifts and make sure your rear end is in neutral your high low is in neutral down here and then you can use your travel travel lower, uh, forward and reverse as you're cranking it with the spark plugs out to pump some more through just need to do it for a little bit as you can see as i move the valves more fluid came out but you need to get it out there you don't have to go crazy you don't want to put too much air in the system these usually do self bleed pretty easy but now at least you got all the all the old oil out, and then uh, we can go through and put the new oil in. 
So if you put a piece of plastic underneath your cap like this, it usually helps uh, lessen the mess. It creates a vacuum in the tank since your uh, tank caps are vented. So use whatever style pliers, your filter wrenches you got. These are what we use to take them off. They grab, they bite good. We don't reuse filters ever, so it doesn't matter if the filter gets damaged. It should be just a bit more than hand tight. So usually, if somebody put it on correctly, all you got to do is turn it a half a turn. A plastic trick isn't working as usually good as it does, so the cap must not be tight enough. But usually you can help some of that from flowing out. So you can get on there with your hands and, and spin it off. These little form of funnels uh, make the job much nicer and easier. All right, now, as you watch, we're gonna crack this tank. And now the cap's off and you get much better flow. Collect it in your pan. Once it's completely drained and you, you got the system pushed out however you want to do it, put your new OEM filter on. There's only a, one or two other equivalents out there. Uh, Ingersoll OEM filters are, are, the, are the ones you use. They've got the right bypass pressure and uh, filter microns. And uh, put, it, put it on there so you can get it hand tight. And then just take a uh, filter, flat filter wrench so you don't damage the filter and turn it half to a full turn. You'll, you'll feel it snug up. But that's how you do it on the uh, newer series Ingersoll's cases with the hydraulic filter. I guess they'd all be Ingersoll's. Okay, now we're going to refill the tractor. So connect your hose if that's the way you drained it. Put your plug back in the travel control valve if that's the way you drained it or whatever method you used. We're going to put our top hose back on. You don't want the clamps all the way at the end, but you don't want them too far down. A quarter, three eighths, half inches is, is plenty. And you don't want them too loose and you don't want them too tight. As soon as they start grabbing, you got a few full turns and you don't want the hose to actually push through those little worm gear slots. But you want it to be pretty tight. And just like that. And then we're going to refill. With motor oil, like we talked about, 1540, 2050, 1550, conventional or synthetic works. Make sure you have a clean funnel. But this is your hydraulic tank. It's going to vary a little bit on years where it is. The shape of the tank, the real early ones had a metal tank up front. Most systems take two gallons plus, so check your manual for your year. Gotta let the air air breathe out too, so don't just if it bubbles back at you, it's just the air coming out with the displacement of the tank. So you can easily get a gallon into them. Dump another half gallon or so into it. You probably can't see where the level is, but it's it's down there quite a bit. It's probably close to a half gallon there. So it's roughly halfway up the tank. And remember we disconnected the spark plug wires, the rear end is a neutral. Then we're going to crank it over uh, as we did to pump it out. We're going to crank it over to feed the system a little bit. It's not going to start because the spark plug wires are disconnected. But it should pump oil through the system. If you want, as long as your travel lever forward or reverse, if your tractor lets you, some safety ears or safety switches won't let you. Well guys, I should have pushed some oil through. You can see it dropped down some. And now we're gonna put some more in. So the rule of thumb for most years is they wanna be three to six inches, two to five inches, depending on the year, from the top of the filler neck. D different shaped tanks kinda depend on, on where it goes, but you need enough room in there for air to expand and, and bleed out and the fluid to do what it's gotta do. So it needs a little bit more here. So I don't know if you can see it or not. I know it's going to be hard to tell, but right now I'd say it's probably four inches from the from the top, which is probably all right for now. After you test drive it, you're going to come back and you'll probably have to add some after 
after the air is uh, pushed out of the system. So in order to, to bleed these, it's usually pretty well self-bleeding, but just to throw the rear end in neutral and uh, run it forward in reverse. So if you put, put your rear end in neutral like it is, like it's been, you start the tractor up, move your forward in reverse. You might have to sit on it depending on your safety system on your tractor. Let it run forward for five minutes or so. Then let it run reverse for five minutes or so. Then cycle your lift lever up and down a few times. Five, six times each up, down. And nine times out of ten you take it for a ride after that for a few minutes and the system's all bled out. Uh, some of the newer ones got a holding valve built into the travel control valve. There's a couple big one inch caps on the end of the, the holding valve which is the, the part that protrudes the most on the bottom of the of the holding valve, uh, the travel control valve. There's a spool in there, you'll see the one inch caps. Just uh, back those out while the tractor's off, crack them a little bit and any air that's in there will come out. But usually you don't have to do that, the system usually bleeds itself. So that's how you do it. Like I said, run it for five minutes, come back, get it warm, and then check your level. And usually you got to top it off a little bit once the air comes out of the system. And then don't forget to put your spark plug wires back on.